the most decentralized blockchain in the world is Polkadot. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, no, it's not. It's XYZ blockchain because of ABC reason. But there's actually many different ways to measure decentralization. And one way that's super underrated is governance. If you don't know, governance is the system through which a blockchain's stakeholders can manage its operations, like upgrades or changes. And Polkadot has consistently pushed boundaries when it comes to governance. Their new Open Governance Model, or OpenGov for short, is so game-changing, it's the reason I call them the most decentralized blockchain in the world. So in this video, I'm going to break down why OpenGov is amazing, why it's got me buying more DOT, and why it'll benefit Polkadot immensely in the long haul. Oh, and with full disclosure, this video was made possible by a Polkadot Treasury grant, which by the way, was done through OpenGov in a completely decentralized manner. Now, let's start at the top with what is OpenGov anyways? Well, it's a governance system for managing things like network upgrades or treasury spends. Basically, any DOT holder can participate by submitting their own proposals, delegating their votes, or voting directly. This makes their system super democratic and open, right? Because the community is in control of the network. There's no centralized group of decision makers, nor a CEO. And that makes OpenGov quite unstoppable. Because if there's no centralized entities to target, then the system will always be able to operate no matter what. So all that sounds amazing, right? But how does it actually work? Well, the way it works is simple yet brilliant. Say you're planning a Polkadot meetup in your city and you need $3,000 to rent the place and buy food and drinks for everyone. Well, you start by submitting a proposal on chain, which includes the amount of DOT you're requesting as well as a description for your plan. Then the proposal goes live and everyone can see it so they start discussing it and voting either A or nay on it. The voting period lasts for up to seven or 28 days, depending on the proposal's track. And the whole time you'll see these types of curves, which visualize how many votes are in favor and what the thresholds are in order to pass it. If the percentage in favor goes above the threshold for a certain amount of time, then the proposal gets passed. And then the funds get automatically distributed to your wallet address. So yeah, this was quite the simplistic explanation of the process and it doesn't capture all of the nuance, but it should give you a high level idea of how it all works. I'm such a huge fan of the system and it really makes Polkadot unique and unrivaled in its decentralization. Like Cosmos has the most similar governance system, but I like Polkadot's more as it favors more direct participation. Avalanche has something along these lines as well, but it doesn't nearly go as far in terms of what can be controlled by it. And Ethereum doesn't have any decentralized governance at all. They were kind of supposed to, but alas, that never happened. It was it was a conversation Vitalik and I had a, a few times. Okay. With the idea being that Ethereum would become a DAO. This was this was the uh, Ethereum was supposed to be a DAO. The Ethereum was eventually going to become a DAO. Like this was oh. um, uh, the the Ethereum Foundation was only meant to exist for as long as we didn't have the DAO. But the DAO would be the thing that we delivered once we delivered Ethereum. So yeah, there's a spectrum when it comes to how decentralized a blockchain's governance is. But Polkadot is clearly at the top end of it any way you slice it. Now, I wanna stress that decentralization is not the only benefit that OpenGov brings to Polkadot because it brings a ton of other benefits too. Like for one, it makes DOT way less likely to be a security in the eyes of the SEC. DOT holders are directly putting in the work by staking their tokens or by voting and participating in governance. Now, this is ultimately still speculation on my end, but I do wanna point out that when the SEC went on that suing spree, they never named DOT as a security. They named Sol, Ada, Algo, and a bunch of other ones though. So that just makes me think that maybe all those rumors were true, that Polkadot's team was able to get on the SEC's good side by doing everything correctly, which by the way, most likely includes decentralizing their governance. But besides not pissing off the SEC, OpenGov will also help Polkadot grow. And here's how. First, it increases community engagement by giving people the power to affect important decisions for the network. This isn't just some hypothetical, by the way. Just look at all the recent drama surrounding influencer proposals for Polkadot's treasury funding. That got people pissed off and they pulled out their wallets, bought more DOT and locked it up for a long time in order to vote against those. So that 
plus the inherent transparency and accountability of such a system makes participants feel more invested in the project overall. But the system also benefits the network on a deeper level because it allows the network to move more quickly with proposals and consider slash execute them in parallel. With this approach, even smaller proposals can get a fair shake versus before the council only had the time and bandwidth to consider larger proposals. And lastly, OpenGov was designed in a super flexible manner, so it can constantly evolve with the community's priorities and values. And it doesn't need to be revamped every year to stay useful. So yeah, I'm super bullish on OpenGov, but it wasn't always like this though. Polkadot's initial governance system was way different from this. They started out with a three chamber structure with each chamber focused on different aspects of the network. One of those chambers was the elected council, which managed things like spending the treasury. Now I understand, and I think it was a good idea for them to start off with that approach, but the problems with it were apparent from the beginning. Like the council members were all known, right? So that was a potential attack vector for any adversary that wanted to harm Polkadot. Furthermore, all referendums had the same amount of power, so that they needed to be carefully considered one at a time. And that meant only the larger, more important proposals were considered. And that meant some people were inevitably excluded from participating. But alas, they knew that this model would not be the final form of Polkadot's governance. And they knew that it was to be iterated on. So a few years later, OpenGov was born with a bunch of new features and processes to address those initial drawbacks. For example, with OpenGov, there are different origins for proposals. So they're not all treated the same. Some that are for less amounts of money can have a much shorter voting period and an easier support threshold to satisfy. There's also a concept called conviction voting, which I love because if you're willing to lock up your DOT tokens for a longer time, then you can apply a multiple to your vote, like 4x, 5x, or even 6x your actual balance. This helps amplify smaller voices, and it also reduces the selling pressure on DOT if a lot of them are being locked up through voting. So yeah, there's a bunch of other features for OpenGov, but the point is that it's so much more fleshed out and polished than their first governance model. Now, I wanna be fair and talk about the issues with OpenGov, because so far I've only been raving about it. So one issue is that there's seriously low voter participation, and most proposals only get a couple hundred votes, which amounts to a small fraction of all the dot that could possibly vote. But it's not hard to imagine why participation is low though. In terms of voting, some people feel disenfranchised because big whales come in at the end of the voting period with their multi-million dollar balance and swing the decision in whichever way they please. Also, a lot of people complain that there's just too many proposals to keep up with. Like there could be dozens launched every day and no one's got the time to check out all of them, right? And then furthermore, it's just hard to come to consensus about what's the best criteria for judging proposals. So it feels quite disjointed and messy and that gets some people to pull back and not participate. So yeah, there is clearly room for improvement. But even with those issues, I've already dove down the rabbit hole and started participating. I bought some DOT, sent it to my Nova wallet, and voted on some proposals while commenting on them through my Polka Assembly account. I also did the more complex process of submitting a proposal on chain. Like that's how I got the grant to make this video. But overall, I'm loving this whole process because there's a lot of drama and high stakes involved. I don't know if y'all know Crypto's Chain. He's one of the oldest Polkadot YouTubers out there, and he had a referendum for about $100,000 worth of DOT funding. Well, that got super heated. Like almost a thousand people voted, and it's rumored that even Gavin Wood himself came in at the last minute to vote nay on this proposal. So yeah, I was following that drama for over a week and I swear it was better entertainment than Netflix. But anyways, if any of this sounds interesting to you, then here's what you gotta do right now. First, buy some DOT and send it to your Nova wallet to start voting. Second, sign up for an account on Polka Assembly to create your own proposal or comment on them. And third, if you don't want to vote yourself, but you wanna help me sway some votes, then you can delegate your vote to me and I'll make sure to apply some stricter standards to these influencer proposals instead of just letting them grift without putting in any effort. So if you wanna partake, just check out my links below and let me know if you have any questions and I'll try my best to answer them. Cheers.